Support for this NPR podcast and the following message come from the Deeply Human podcast, a BBC World Service and American Public Media co-production with iHeartMedia. Why do you get deja vu? Why do you listen to songs that make you sad? Find out why you do what you do on Deeply Human, where you get your podcasts. Power Talk on National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tafford Brothers. We're broadcasting this week from the Doug Berman Center for Thermochemistry Studies here at Car Talk Plaza. You know, yes, I know. Dougie, everyone thinks that Doug is just our lowly yeah. producer. And the fact that he's never here is not to his credit. And maybe no. to some people it is to his credit. But, but he's but been what? taking a correspondence course. He's becoming a correspondent. Yes, I know. <laughs> a war correspondent. He, he's, no, he's taking a correspondence course to earn his PhD in chemistry. That's right, through the mail. From Far Western University. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting to me is all the labs that he does in the in the mail. How do you do that? <laughs> mail in labs. <laughs> how do you do the mail in lab? Well, we decide, we, we give him a job. His project. And by the way, how if he's if he's going to a correspondence school, how kind of keeps telling us he's got a roommate? <laughs> <laughs> Share the same envelope, but. <laughs> I guess so. But his project for the next six months is figuring out how to keep our coffee hot during the hour that we're on the air. That's right. He's giving us this this little. It's hard to drink out of these concrete. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so heavy. Back Maybe, to. The, Maybe the concrete is all right if you had like a straw, but drinking coffee with a straw, it doesn't seem right. No, I don't like the whole concrete. I don't like the whole concrete idea. No, it's bad. I like abstract things more. Do you have any? Well, uh, I do actually. uh, I have several things. They're all in the way of. uh, I was going to ask if you had any sugar. I wasn't. No, (laughs) they're all in the way of, what do you call them? Adages, saws, aphorisms? Yes. Yeah, things of that nature. I discovered that the philosophy of life as as proposed. By comic strips. And I've realized that that's where the real philosophy of life comes from. Sure. Zippy the Pinhead. That's the, exactly the one I got here. I mean, if you read the last panel of Zippy the Pinhead every day, you know, look at this one. Talk about a great unyielding truth. Go Couple ahead. I'm ago, ready, man. A man's brain is in inverse ratio to the size of his belt buckle. <laughs> Think about that. Well, I got this belt buckle that has an entire <laughs> Gettysburg address on it. Is that? And the other thing I discovered from Shu the other day, you know how you're always making pejorative statements, I guess would be the, the nicest way to say it, about the fact that I don't work as many hours a day as I should. And you, I mean, it, it is not I that makes these I mean, Bugsy keeps referring to the it's, fact it's, that if I leave work early, I'm liable to pass myself going in. <laughs> I mean, that's not nice. I discovered through reading Shu the other day, I never realized this myself. I'm on the metric system. You Celsius, know what a work right. day is? Four and a half hours. Right. Celsius. Son of... Simple. See, and Sonia, Henny's tutu. The things that you worry about, and then all of a sudden, with some simple little insight, I've been on yeah. a metric work day. Yeah, but so is your paycheck going to be. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> so what? Celsius scale, too. <laughs> all right, now what? Can we, can we take a call? Yeah, I'm ready. If you'd like to call us, our number is one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Allison from Denver, Colorado. El- is- Elsa? Allison, yeah. Allison. Hello. Oh, Allison. Yeah. Oh, a. I- I'm sorry. L. Two L's? Well, Allison as in A for Apple. Yeah. Double L-I-S-O-N. Oh, straightforward. And you're from, yeah, very you're, straightforward. You're from Denver, but previously from, like, Sweden. No, near, but not quite. Finland. No. Norway. Go, go south a little. Go south a little. Yeah. Wales. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually from Scotland. Scotland. Scot- oh, no. I, I, as soon as you said Scotland. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would give it away, wouldn't it? Yes, I yes, don't slightly. Said it. But you are now of Denver. Yes, I'm now in good old sunny Denver. Yeah. So what's up, Alice? Okay, I am about a month ago. I bought a '94 Golf two-liter manual transmission. Yeah. And it was a really cold morning, and I came out. She put the, the key in. She went vroom, and then she died. Mm-hmm. And then she was like, roo, roo, roo. she <laughs> wouldn't start. And uh-huh. then when she did start, she sounded like an old tractor. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, so then I took her back to the dealer. And they said your timing belt had jumped. No, they said I had a cracked breather. A cracked breather? Yes. Whatever that is. And then they said my spark plugs were arcing. Uh huh. So they replaced all the spark plugs, all the wires, the ignition cable, the breather. And I 
Wayne collected her and thought, yeah, great. Next morning, did exactly the same. Oh, really? Yeah. The breather. The breather. Oh, the breather. <laughs> they're, 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 they're referring to, Captain. <laughs> they is, I believe, take it. I believe the bellows that connects to the intake manifold that goes from the air mass meter to the intake manifold. Oh, oh, that breather. I think that's what, that's what they're talking Unless it's the, unless the, the breather. Breather. I don't know. We don't know what that is, but yeah. that's okay. Well, the breather years ago used to be the air cleaner. Oh. But it isn't the air. Your air cleaner wouldn't be cracked, and that certainly wouldn't prevent it from running correctly. So I'm assuming they're talking about this bellows. But go continue the story. Anyway, so I called back up the guy at the dealer, and he said, well, that's really strange. And <laughs> bring it back in. And, and when, when, it, when you first turn the key, it starts right up. Oh, beautiful, yeah. But it only runs for a few seconds. Yeah, and then it dies. And then it dies, and then when you turn the key again, it, it cranks. It goes... Yeah. yeah, it sounds as if it's got like a bad case of the flu. Yeah. It's like... Rrr, rrr, okay, rrr. but does it crank slowly, or does it crank at the regular speed? It Here's cranks. regular speed. Here's slowly. 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 Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did they know this? Did you tell them this? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Tell me you want your money back on the spark plugs, the wires, the cracked <coughs> breather. The breather. And everything else they might have done. The breather. If you told them that and they replaced all this other stuff. Yeah. That was, I think, uncalled for. Oh, well, really? I mean, you may have needed these other things. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, she may need a back scratch, too, but they didn't do that for her. Well, they should have. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it sounds like the battery's dead. Really? That's what it sounds like to me, too, or the starter isn't working properly. Yeah. That's simple. Well, it Whoa. could be simple. Oh. It could be. But I, mean, I think I think your plan of attack at this point should be to, to call them and tell them you're a little bit disappointed. <laughs> and to ask them to keep the car overnight. Well, that's the problem. I did that. We had, like, six inches of snow, and they said it started no problem. Oh, you left it with them? Yeah. Oh, so it's you that's the problem. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with six inches of snow, it started fine. Yeah, and then they replaced all this stuff, and then I called them again, and then they said, we'll bring it back in and leave it with us for two days instead of one. And now it's home, and it doesn't start. No, it, she, she starts because the weather's not that cold here, and yeah. she's starting. So now she's starting. Yeah. And it may have started for them, because despite the fact that there was six inches of snow, it may have, in fact, been a warmer day yeah. than it was when it didn't start for you. Yeah. So I, I still think they should do a test on the battery, the charging system, and the starter. Oh, brilliant. And the, the reason it starts the first time is that the battery will kind of rejuvenate itself, uh -huh. you know, overnight and may have enough oomph in it so that it does start or it does give you 20 seconds or so of adequate cranking. Uh -huh. But once you've exhausted that and the thing hasn't started, yeah, because it really isn't cranking perhaps fast enough, oh, okay. then subsequent cranking gets you that whoa, whoa, that pathetic sound my and brother it, made. And it sounds like it's right on the hairy edge of being okay. And if I had to guess... You have a bad cell in your battery. You think I've got a bad cell in my battery? Yeah. Anyway, what are you doing in Denver? Just out of curiosity. I mean, we should have asked you this an hour ago. <laughs> uh, so I work as, I'm a medical researcher at the National Jewish Medical and Research Center here really? in Denver. And they don't do this kind of stuff in Scotland? Yeah, no, they, they do, play golf is, in this Scotland. This is a great research place. Cool. Yeah. And do you like it? I love it. Do you yeah. ski? I'm, I'm learning, so I'm getting 10 out of 10 from my falls at the moment. And do you, do you <laughs> like Americans compared to Scots? Um, yeah. Yeah. Tell the truth. I think them We're a bunch of... You met of... any fellas yet? Uh, <laughs> no, not yet. But not yet, huh? No, but you... I've got a lot of good friends that are brilliant. Brilliant yeah, doesn't brilliant count. Yeah, brilliant doesn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant's, brilliant's okay for a while. <laughs> yeah, you get sick of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, very good luck to you, Allison, and welcome, welcome to America. Oh, it's been great talking much, to you. Guys. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> One eight 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 car talk. That's one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on car talk. My name's Steve. I'm calling you from Los Angeles. What's up, Steve? I got a '97 Saturn station wagon, uh, the uh, SW2 with the power windows and the power door locks. Uh huh. And um, drive at night. I can flip the rearview mirror for the shade to block the glare, but I get the glare from the. 
inside your mirror. So I got a great little yeah. shaded piece of plastic with a suction cup on it ah. that I put on the inside of the window. <laughs> cool. And that blocks the glare from the side view mirror. So you, you suction cup this to the, your driver's window and your passion on the inside. Right. Yeah. Right. I got great. it. Great. Great. A little while ago, I went into a parking lot, lot where you got to get the ticket. So I lowered oh. the window. And you smashed it. Oh, no, no, I know. No, what no, are the no, suction no. I cups? The window, I raise the window. I get the ticket. I raise the window. I go to park the car, and I realize it's not there. Uh, the suction cups aren't there, right? Oh, the whole thing's the gone? The whole thing went down into the inside <laughs> the whole of the door, <laughs> and it stayed there. Cool. And um, what I want to know is, can I get this panel off and retrieve this plastic thing with your guidance, or do I have to go to the dealer? Well, does the window go up and down? It won't go all the way down, so I know it's under there. Mm. Well, do you mind that it doesn't go all the way down? Of course yes. he does. And you, Steve, you've got to fix this. Yeah, and I want that thing back if it's not broken, yeah. Well, it's it's likely to be mangled. Okay. Yeah, but, but I guess if you if it bothers you, I mean, if it didn't bother you, I think it would be perfectly safe to just leave it where it is because it's obviously down at the bottom. No, I think you, I, Steve. Yeah. We're going in. Okay. We're going in, Steve. Okay. <laughs> so most door panels, and I, and Saturn included, they're easy. To actually, on. pop off. They're held on by a a friction type connector. Which okay. is a which is a uh, basically a piece of plastic that gets pushed into a hole in the door frame. Yeah. Okay. And when the plastic goes in, it's kind of swaged in. And the way you get these things out is you put a screwdriver between the the plastic trim of the door and the metal part of the door. And you pry the thing. And off. you pry it, and you'll see one pop off. All right. And that will encourage you. And All then right. you'll pop off the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Now it may require that you take off the armrest or the door handle, which may require some tools. Oh, like no, no, screw, no there. like screwdrivers, but you have yeah. tools, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you may you may be able to pry off the bottom of this just enough, okay, to lie on the ground, and look up in there, and you will see when you do that, you will see the window mechanism. You'll okay. see the window from a vantage point that you've never seen it before, uh -huh. and you'll see your piece of plastic with the suction cups. And you may not have to do anything. It may well be that when you pry the bottom of the door off, the thing just falls out onto the ground. No, you're going to have to liberate this thing. I'll bet you not. You want to make a side bet? A hundred bucks. A hundred bucks That's why the window won't go down. No. It's down at the very bottom. He's going to pry that panel off, and his little device is going to fall right out onto the floor. Steve, and you're going to need you're going to need the SWAT team to get this thing out. <laughs> All right. But but you can do it. But it's, okay. it, it is not going to just fall out. But you'll be able to extract it. And I was going to make a recommendation actually, that you nix the suction cups. You can get a piece of this plastic that, that just sticks. that will that will adhere by uh, static electricity or some such thing. You could rub it on your okay. toupee even. Yeah, <laughs> and and get it to stick to the window, and All then right. it could go up and down maybe with the window. And then, yeah, and well, it might be able to. At least you wouldn't gum up the works. Yeah. But I like the suction cup because it's a perfect nighttime TV product. Yeah, Steve, it's a, it's a great th we are your ticket out of this dump. Oh, Steve, you ought to call Ron Popeil. He'll have this on TV in a right week. Now. Well, I, this I is a great from idea a, from a company that went out of business. Oh, you bought it. I thought you made no, it. No, no, no. I bought this. Oh, but if they went belly up, this is your chance to I cash see. in. Oh. Yeah. Maybe they just had the wrong marketing strategy. They tried to sell them. <laughs> well, they That's sold it to right. me, and it's great. Good luck. All right. Thanks for your call, Steve. Thank you, guys. <laughs> see Take you care. later. Bye-bye. one -bye. Bye. <laughs> 1-888-CAR-TALK or one 227 8255 Hello. You're on Car Talk. Hi. This is Kristen in Sterling, Illinois, late of Arinda, California. Kristen. Sterling, Illinois. Sterling, Illinois. Almost to Iowa. Yeah. I've never been to Sterling, I have to say. I'm sorry, I guess. Maybe I'm not sorry. No, you didn't say you were sorry. No, right. it's a great little town. What can we do I for believe you? you, Kristen? I have an 84 Honda Civic Wagon, okay. and for the last two years I've been chasing the infamous squeak in the dash. Mm -hmm. Every time I take it to the Honda place, it will not squeak. Well, you must bring it to the Honda place. That might make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing it right. You're taking it. Right, and uh, but what I've noticed, I've started to keep notes, and it either squeaks when it's very cold out, or I'm very upset. The reason that it doesn't happen when the mechanic drives it, there are, there are several reasons. Obviously, he's not driving it as long as you drive it. He goes around the block, and he's trying to get rid of you. He also isn't you. And he also is driving the car differently. That's right. He isn't you. So, not only is he not you, he probably doesn't look like you. He doesn't weigh what you weigh. So as soon as he gets into the seat, this has something to do with you still here, Kristen? <laughs> Isn't okay, this, so, this have so something to do mechanic, with the laws of uncertainty? It, can I tell him where to look? Yes, tell him to look at the speedometer cable. Okay. 
that's likely to be making a e- 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 that the noise? Yeah, I think it's a jiggle. My friend thinks it's something rotating, but I think I'm right. Well, I think it's a speedometer cable, which is rotating, because that, in fact, will make noise and it'll increase in frequency as the car speeds up. Is that what happens? Exactly. Is it more likely to go away after you've driven for a while? Uh, yes, the, and I thought that's because it's warmed up. Or that's right. Or because I'm going like right. 20 miles an hour, and then, it's, then it, you can barely hear it. Is it worse in very cold weather? It's terrible in cold weather. Mm. Oh. I mean, that's why going from California to Illinois, I started going crazy, because in California, it hardly ever happened. Well, if you can't afford to fix it, hire someone to drive your car for 20 minutes before you get in it in the morning. I, I will tell you one thing, however, Kristen. A few weeks ago, uh, I replaced a... The only reason I'm so intimately familiar with this problem, I replaced a speedometer cable on an 84 Civic wagon <laughs> for just this reason. And... and- and the guy the called noise me go up away? a week later. He said, "Ray, <laughs> that noise is still there." I said, Gee, "That should have fixed it. I don't know what it is, but I have to run now. Can I get back to you?" And that was the end of that. So, I would suggest they do the cable, which is easy to do. Right. Have them disconnect the speedometer cable and see if the noise goes away. Okay. Because if it does, then you'll know it's either it's this, it's the speedometer itself, which yeah. I think is what's wrong with Dan's car. Yeah. I'll put you in touch with Dan. Maybe you can start a support group here. Some kind of... <laughs> Good luck, Kristen. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. But this is the uncertainty principle. You can't observe something without changing it. That's the whole problem. Okay, Tommy. Do you remember last week's puzzler? No. I know you don't, so I'm going to give you a hint. All right. Give me a hint. It had to do with a used car driven by a sweet little old school teacher who only drove it to school and back. I don't believe it. They always say that. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what the question was. <laughs> oh. And I'll have the answer in just a minute, so stay tuned. She ain't covered up with chrome layer upon layer Front seat's a little ripped, paint job's only fair Carries a load, Lord, just like she should That's my 53 Chevy Runs good Now and then there are things you just got to move Like a cord of oak for your wood burning stove she carries more wood than a woodchuck ever could. That's my 53 Chevy. Runs good. And even though Charles Darwin wonders, how did these guys survive? <laughs> Whenever he hears us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, the online counseling service dedicated to connecting you with a licensed counselor to help you overcome whatever stands in the way of your happiness. Fill out a questionnaire and get matched with a professional tailored to your needs. And if you aren't satisfied with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time free of charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash CarTalk to get 10% off your first month. Get the help you deserve with BetterHelp. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor Hammerker Schlemmer, providing products that cleverly and effectively solve everyday problems, including how to find the perfect gift for those who have everything or profess to need nothing. Today, their lineup includes a jigsaw puzzle created from a reproduction of the New York Times that ran on the day you were born or any other milestone date. Find this and other items at hammerker.com. Use code NPR20 to receive $20 off your order. Life Kit is rethinking New Year's resolutions. All this January, we're thinking about both really big and really small changes. If you're wanting to change up your life and start fresh, we've got you covered. If you're looking to just make your home a little nicer, we got you there too. Listen now to the Life Kit podcast from NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tapper Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repairs. And uh, the answer to last week's puzzler, and, and here it is. I'm sure you've forgotten all about it. The guy, they were buying a used car. Very good. And it was only driven by a little old lady who drove it to school once in a while when she went and to church on Sunday. The, you got it. That's it. Keep going. Don't, sl- don't slow the, down now. And the little old, and, and, and the woman who was driving, buying the car, the prospective buyer said, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> How's that? Hey, I actually remember this I'm puzzler. I'm blown away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you got most of the facts right. Yeah, I don't really but, remember the details. But she and her husband looking at the car, and the salesman says, oh, Miss, my fourth grade teacher or some such thing, Miss Johnson, drove this car, and she only drove it back and forth to school. She never left town with it, and she drove to church on Sunday, and on Saturday, it sat in her driveway. And anyway, they look over the car. and My fourth grade teacher was Miss Skayen, 
S K A H A N. How about that was the, the second? Fir- that was the first time. The, fir- the second time, fourth grade. Oh, second time. Yeah, yeah. I I I did all the grades. Too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they look over. That the was car. because my teachers liked me. My mommy said. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they liked you so much, Tommy. They want you to stay another year. Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, come on. You're killing valuable time here. There are there are people out there that need to speak to us. All right. I'm sorry. <sighs> anyway, they look over the car, and of course, it looks magnificent. And the woman asks the obvious question: Well, why did Miss Johnson sell the car? And the dealer says, Well, as luck would have it, she she was called out of town on very short notice to care for a sick relative in the Midwest someplace. And, yeah. and so she came in here last week and sold us the car. And, of course, it's your good fortune that it's here. And mm-hmm. So the woman gets in behind the wheel and starts up the engine and it sounds great. And her husband gets in the passenger seat. and She fills with the controls on the dashboard. And the husband is saying, oh, gee, let's get it. Let's get it. It's really cute. I love it. I love it. It's Turns a nice on color. on the heater. She plays with everything. She right? blows the horn. Everything works perfectly. And the husband says, gee, hon, I, we got to get it. You know, I, let's do it. And she says, I don't think so. The salesman is lying to us. <gasps> and the A question- salesman lying, the husband says? <laughs> and the question- Incredulously? <laughs> and the question is, how did she know the answer? Because he opened his mouth. The answer- his lips were that moving. wasn't the answer that his lips were moving. <laughs> well, she did fiddle with everything. The wipers, and she blew the horn, and she turned on the heater and all that. And she also turned on the radio. Yeah. And when she turned on the radio, she noticed that it was not set to a local station. In fact, there was noise coming across. Mm. So she tried another station and another and another. Oh. And in every case, the, the presets, presets were set, set to set stations to that were not local stations. So oh, this man. car clearly was from out of town. And if the story were absolutely true that Miss Johnson never left town, Jeez. then yeah. how could she have listened to these stations? <sighs> man. So who's our winner, Tommy? What a clever woman, huh? Indeed. Wow. Our winner this week is Andy Parala from Kamuela, Hawaii. Kamuela. That sounds Kamuela. like... Kamuela. Kamuela. Yeah. Yeah. Hawaii. It's, it's, it's actually Hawaiian for calm weather. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Kamuela. As a matter of fact, my pal Dusty Chuck went to Hawaii the other day, and he sent us a postcard saying, I'm never coming back. And I told well, him, can I have your table saw? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted his Lexus. Andy Perala lives there all the time, and for having his answer selected at random from among the thousands of correct answers we got, Andy's going to get a $25 gift certificate to the Car Talk Shameless Commerce Division with which he can practically dress himself. I mean, as long as he only dresses from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he lives in Hawaii. Yeah. You the, don't need much. You don't need much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Uh, we'll have a br- I, 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 we'll have a brand new puzzler coming up in the third half of the show. I have not yet decided what the puzzle will be, so I can't even give a description. I, I it's just so agonizing coming up with a. Will it involve a dimly lit Quonset hut? I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. But it uh, might. It, it doesn't might be, get any better than it that. It might man. be good, and you, you you never can tell. So hang around. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, anyway, if you have a question about your car, you can give us a call. The number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Good day, gentlemen. How are you doing today? Good. good. How this? are you? Great, great, great day. Good. Listen, I have, a, I have a good question for you. Yeah. I don't know whether GM's trying to pull the wool over my eyes or what. Well, uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. When you call someone on the phone, like say you call your, your sister-in-law, if uh-huh. you have one. Do you just start talking or do you say, hi, this is, and tell her who it is? Oh, because nine times out of ten, they know who I am. <laughs> well, we all know who the hell you are. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is Lenny. Oh. No? All right, this is Phil from Cambridge. Phil, okay. Oh. Cambridge, Massachusetts? Cambridge, Massachusetts. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew that instantly there was a rapport between you Our and me. Our fair city. <laughs> I, I could tell immediately. I don't know what the heck you were talking about, but I knew just from the sound of your... Phil, maybe you know, I... it's entirely possible. You know, that I was reading an article once that said, be, because molecules of oxygen have been on the... The same molecules have been on the planet for <laughs> thousands of years. It's very possible that you have breathed in one of the molecules. And in fact, Julius Caesar breathed. Remember his last breath? That's right. When he said, Oh, Brutus, you Brutus, you miserable you oh, good <laughs> son of a... <laughs> so it's possible, Phil, that you're having been in Cambridge, that that you gave my brother money when he was a panhandler. 
in Harvard Square back in the old days. Is it just possible? It's it's possible. A good possibility. <laughs> Did you ever give money to a panhandler? <laughs> it's kind of a scruffy looking panhandler. Anyway. Well, just to orient, what part of Cambridge are you from, Phil? Uh, Inman Square area. Oh, man. You want to have coffee someday? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. You're give buying, though. <laughs> All I'm right. Buying. So you started to rail at General Motors. What, yeah. what about them? Well, listen, I have a Buick Roadmaster. Uh huh. Yeah. Bought and you live new. in Cambridge? In Cambridge. <laughs> what the hell do you do with it at night? <laughs> he lets it circle. <laughs> <laughs> you put it into a holding pattern over your house? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> well, my question is, is when I'm turning the wheel left or right, okay, I get a loud scraping noise, uh, like a bang from it, and it comes from the front end. So I brought the car back. They look at it and say, ah, we had to adjust the steering stops. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, okay, they had to adjust the steering stops. Fine. Noise went away. Two weeks later, the noise comes back again. Well, they didn't adjust the steering stops. More likely, they... They, they installed them. No. <laughs> More likely, they lubricated them. Well, they've lubricated them five times now. Hmm. I still have the same problem. But the only time you get this noise is when the wheel is turned all the way. All the way to the left and or to the right. It doesn't matter. Either way. Yeah. yeah no, and, and they're not lying to you. Uh... Yeah, but they put the car up on the rack one day. Okay, when I was standing there, they showed me what was going on. The yeah. tires are hitting the sway bar in the front. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> they all do that. <laughs> and now, I just, I just brought it back about a ooh, couple of weeks ago. I said, look, the noise is back, gentlemen. You know, oh, we have to lubricate them, but, you know, it's uh, with the wet, the wet weather and, you know, it's freezing under there. Uh, wait till it warms up and bring it back. I said, yeah, well, in the meantime, I, I blow a tire. Well, when, when they lubricate the stops, the noise does, in fact, go away, doesn't it? For for a week or two, sure, yeah. and then it comes right back again. Yeah, and and the fact that the tires are hitting the sway bar is probably it's not hitting the sway bar at all unless you right. really turn severely, and then then again, there's no real danger well, because well, you're not going to blow a tire. Not not even rubbing up against the. Uh, no, not unless you're doing no. sixty when you have that no, wheel because, turned all gotta, the way. Yeah, it's it's only doing it when you got the wheel cranked all the way one way or the other, and. Sure, but I mean, this shouldn't be happening in the first place. No. Am I right? You're right. But that's not what's making the noise. I mean, what's probably the case is that the tires are too wide. Next time, get little skinnier ones. Get skinnier ones. Skinnier, yeah. And that'll that'll take care of the problem? Well, no, it won't take care. No, it'll take care of the rubbing on the sway bar. But like I said, I wouldn't worry about that. We see that with a lot of cars. Okay. And I wouldn't worry about the other noise either. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. I mean, nothing is wearing out or getting hurt when that happens. Uh, no, no. no they don't say, worry you know, about I, it. I saw that the front end, you know, it's not throwing the front end out of alignment or anything. No, right. no. It is not doing any such thing. And the reason you have this problem is that you have a car that's too big for the city in which you live. <laughs> that's right. Because other people don't have to cut yeah. the wheel all the way left or right because their cars are already around the corner. Yeah. Yours, the back end of it is still in the uh, right, You're going to get square. one of those firemen to sit in the back with the, <laughs> with the other steering wheel. <laughs> I mean, when you hang that right from Cambridge Street onto Beacon Street, yeah. right? Yeah. Why, half the car is in Somerville, half of it is in Cambridge, and, then, and no wonder you got to crank it around like that. Well, hey, you know. Right, what you no, now, if you me? lived in Winchester, you wouldn't have this problem. You'd pull in your driveway at night, you'd back out, you wouldn't be turning Oh, you'd have a like circular this. driveway. You wouldn't even have to do that. You'd just pull That's into your circular the driveway, backing come out right out. Of my driveway. Huh? That's how I discovered the problem, backing out of my driveway. Yeah, yeah but backing out in Cambridge where the streets are only eight feet wide. You need to go where the streets are <laughs> wide, man. you got a wide-body car. <laughs> yeah. Why did you buy this thing, Phil? I mean, are you, like, well, in the painting business? Previously... I owned a little uh, Nissan. <laughs> this is what happens to people. All right? Yeah. And now I own a 120-pound Rottweiler. <laughs> okay? And he was starting to outgrow the Nissan. Yeah. And he wasn't going to fit into another one. Yeah. People do go to extremes like this. I, I went from a little sports car to a GMC Suburban. And I don't know why I did that. It was just one of those things. And I then was... he went from that to a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> <laughs> With wheels. <laughs> Hey, Phil, thanks for calling. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in Inman Square someday. Well, we'll I'll be wearing the carnation. The Let's have the coffee. I'm, I'm for it. He'll be wearing the carnation. <laughs> see you, Phil. All right. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Cambridge is a very densely populated 
city. It is our fair city, and we love yeah. it. And cars are parked on all sides of the street, so I mean, I can imagine top why. Top and bottom, even. Left, I... right, top, <laughs> exactly. and bottom. I like your idea of circling. Circling? <laughs> <laughs> why do you just set the cruise control and jump out at your house and just let that baby go on the <laughs> One eight 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 Car Talk or one eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Judy from Flagstaff, Arizona. Judy, Hi there. How are you? Gee, I've always wanted to go to Flagstaff. Well, come on over. It's really pretty. Reminds me of Professor Wagstaff from the <laughs> one of those Groucho Marx movies. <laughs> So what's up, Judy? Well, actually, this is an elevation-related question. Really? No kidding. Wow. Yeah. And here, I'll start out. I have a white Ford Escort. It has automatic transmission, a 1.9-liter double-barrel carburetor engine, and it has 207,000 miles on it. Wow. And you want to know, from what height must you drop it <laughs> to <laughs> no. make sure that it is totally <laughs> sure won't run again. <laughs> It's great, and I want to get it to go 226,000 miles because somebody told me that's the distance from the surface of the Earth to the surface of the Moon. Well, it depends whether it's an apogee or perigee. <laughs> uh, well, okay. <laughs> all right, well, 226 no. is good enough. Yeah, but 207 enough. is not enough. We know that. Well, it did. It started. <laughs> it started doing this one really strange thing about six months ago, or at least that's when I first noticed it. To go from Flagstaff to Phoenix, you have to go down a long hill, and then you level out at Camp Verde, which is a little town, and then you start going up another hill. Yeah. And when I go down the hill, you know, you come down from elevation from about six thousand feet to just under three thousand feet, and you do it in about twelve miles. So it's pr- it's not severe, but it's a long downhill. Yeah. And whenever I go down this hill, about two thirds of the way down, my car will start blowing white smoke out of the tailpipe, but only when I use the accelerator. Yeah. Because you can't coast all the way down a long hill. So you down towards the bottom, you start putting on the accelerator, and you look in your rearview mirror, and you're blowing white smoke. So. Um, mm. What I want to know is, what is causing this? Mm. That's it? That's it, because, you know, I don't want to pollute the atmosphere. The The car runs beautifully. It doesn't lose any um, fluids or anything like that. So I'm just curious as to what might be making this white smoke. Have you been losing any fluids? None at all. She I mean, just my... said, I'm not losing any fluids. <laughs> I wonder if she's losing any fluids. <laughs> Antifreeze coolant. No. Um, the transmission fluid seems to be fine. Everything's fine. It does, huh? Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, how big is this? I mean, wh- how, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I would have to say that um, you're wrong about the color. Is it the color? Well, I would, yeah, I would have to say too. I, I would be more inclined to believe it is a slight blue tinge. Yeah. And it, it is a well-known fact that when the engine is coasting. Uh-huh. And and the in the uh, well, this is going to sound like it's made up, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not. But I mean... it's not. When the engine is coasting and the rings are in the relaxed position. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's it's true. An engine on coast that's reaccelerated will often blow a pretty good cloud of blue tinged smoke. Yeah. Well, actually, it looks like cigarette smoke. Yeah, which has a blue tinge to it. But I, I suspect that it, it is actually oil that's coming out the tailpipe. Yeah, I mean, this is the classic way that, that you see oil burning. And the fact that you say that you're not using burn, losing any fluids, you uh-huh. are adding from time to time, I'm sure, some oil yeah. to this thing. Just a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Quarter day or what? <laughs> oh, you mean the, the oil? No. No, no. You it probably... doesn't take much to make a huge billow of smoke. Now, if you were climbing that, 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 that hill instead of descending it and you uh-huh. accelerated, you probably wouldn't. If you were constantly... Uh, pressing on the gas pedal, you wouldn't see that cloud of smoke because as combustion takes place in the cylinders, uh, it, it tends... What does it do? What happens when that combustion <laughs> takes place? <laughs> I, I never did understand that. No, I, I, it's, a, it's, an un, it's an unknown phenomenon, but it, it is in fact true that when the thing is coasting and then you reapply the, the, uh, the throttle, you will get sometimes a puff of smoke. It either be coming from the rings, more likely from the rings, or sometimes even from the valve guides. But don't worry about it. I mean, and I think the other reason that it's that it happens going down the hill uh-huh. is that when you're going down the now, hill. Here's the part. Here's where we should have stopped. <laughs> no, we no, should have stopped no, about. Well, I, I just had a brilliant insight here. Go ahead. Okay. When it's going down the hill, you're more likely to see it. That's true because the sun's generally behind you. No, you even know, you if it weren't for it. the sun, you are going down the hill. The smoke comes out the back uh-huh. and. As you go down, the smoke stays where it is, and boom, there it is in your rearview mirror. Right. Whereas if you were going 
up the hill. No, 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 no. You look out the rearview mirror, and the smoke is down underneath you. No, it is not. <laughs> oh, <that>. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's much easier to notice it mm-hmm. going down the hill. Yeah? It, it you draw the diagram. To, you'll see. <laughs> it doesn't seem to smoke any other time. I yeah. mean, at all. I mean, yeah. I've had people follow me and check it out. Sure. Yeah. But it is. It's, but it's nothing to worry about. It's nothing. Okay. It nothing. Is, it's not going to interfere with your 226,000 miles. Don't worry about a thing. No, so I mean, you may... like, die in the middle of the trackless desert because of the smoke? No. It's no, the, okay. no, the smoke won't kill it. The timing belt will break or something like that it's will already, happen. That happened. That yeah. happened already? Good. Yeah, a couple times. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See you, Judy. Bye, Judy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, it's that time of the show again. Oh, is this the part where the old lady with the tea cart comes by and offers us like the digestive biscuits, <laughs> uh, the elevensies, as we call it the in the old London? No, yeah. this is where we went out to the kitchen, accidentally break the coffee machine, put up a quick note that says, sorry I broke this, signed Scott Simon, and then dashed back in here in time for the puzzle. <laughs> Let's go. We'll be back with a new puzzler in just a minute. And even though Goldilocks wonders who's been messing with her radio's presets whenever she (laughs) hears us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Fidelity Wealth Management, where a Fidelity representative can give you a complimentary wealth planning review and walk you through Fidelity's one-on-one approach to wealth management. From exploring strategies that align with your goals to assessing the impact taxes have on your portfolio, learn more at fidelity.com slash wealth. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC. Does your economy seem sluggish? Are your interest rates feeling abnormally low? Your economy might be exhibiting symptoms of a -a once-in-a-lifetime recession. Ask your podcast provider about a twice-weekly dose of Planet Money. The economy can be perplexing. NPR's Planet Money can help. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us. Click and clack the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and uh, the new Puzzler. I I just want to interject here. Yes. Uh, The Puzzlers over the past few weeks have been quite good. Oh. Oh. I think you're... In line for a real bull. Oh, in that case, I'll I just use want this you... one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm encouraged now. I mean, I think the dimly lit Quonset hut. Oh, I mean that was get, that bought was, you. That was poetic. Bought you a, a real loser. All right. Well, this actually this arrived just recently. Oh. Well, that, that doesn't matter because you're putting the stuff on top of the bottom. That's what's happened. I, I, I used to put it on the bottom, but... <laughs> no, it's no, there's no right. way to do that, right? This is from a guy named Melvin Anderson, and I'm going to read it just the way he sent it because... Okay, Melvin. And, 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 and you'll figure it out. Yeah. He writes about himself in the third person. Yeah. Melvin had been briefing the boss at a staff meeting since he arrived at the office. Too busy, in fact, for even a cup of coffee. Worse than that, he'd skip breakfast that morning because he got up late, got dressed in a hurry, and sped off to the office in his 65 Mustang convertible. The top was up, of course, because it was cold. It's January. No wonder he'd felt hunger pangs since he got to work. When he finally finished his busy meeting, he glanced at his brand new digital wristwatch, which he got for Christmas. Yikes! No wonder I'm hungry. It's 12.01. Lunchtime. Melvin hurriedly donned his coat, hat, and gloves, and raced out the rear entrance of the building, heading for the, you know, the lunch counter across the street. He darted between traffic lanes and parked cars and almost fell into the doorway of the lunch counter. The door was locked. A sign hung inside the door, closed. We opened at 11 a.m. Huh? He rechecked his watch, which was working just fine, and realized why the lunch counter was closed. What did Melvin discover? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on a postcard or on a, preferably, 
a waterstone moonlight sauna with overhanging ceiling, <laughs> romantic low voltage lighting, four benches, two headrests, and deluxe heater guard. <laughs> <laughs> and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our fifth city. Ma 02238. Or you can email your answer to us from cartalk.com. You sure he drove to work that day? He drove to work that I read it just like he. Yeah. Melvin. Okay. Hey, look, if you have a question right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not about Melvin. <laughs> Give us a call. The number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 88-82-278-255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi. Hi. My name is Jeanette. I'm from Milwaukee. Jeanette, like G-E-A-N-E-T-T-E? That's right. From Milwaukee. Right. Yeah. What can we do for you, Jeanette? Well, my problem is I have an 85 Buick Skyhawk station wagon. Oh, you don't, you don't know how much of a problem that is. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. Uh, over a year ago, I had new front brakes put in. And since that time, after the car's been sitting for a while and I drive it, especially at night or when it's damp, there's a knocking noise over, it seems, uh, under my left foot, like under the left front wheel. And after about <laughs> Maybe the mechanic is still under there from the <laughs> brake job, trying to get out from under the car. <laughs> Let me out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Well, I wish they were still under there. Believe You'd be me. running them over. I know. <laughs> a knocking. Um, the noise disappears after 25 minutes, so I've taken it back there three times. They drive it when it's convenient for them, and they think, of course, that I'm I'm hearing things. Yeah. I'm out of my mind. They say, so here I comes Wacko Jeanette again. What? They say, here comes Wacko Jeanette right, again. Right, right. I told them I'm going to call you guys up. And I'll give, I'll tell them what's wrong with it. Yeah, in fact, our producer said, "Wacko Jeanette's on the line. You want to talk to her?" <laughs> <laughs> so, you you haven't left this car overnight with them. You say it's more apt to do this when it's cold and wet, right? Or even in the summer, uh, after I, you know, I work second shift, I get into it at night and start driving. Every time I put the brakes on, whack, 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 whack. Right, it's like somebody taking a. Uh, stick across a fence and, and running along like that. It's bump, 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 <laughs> That's what the show is all about. It's just <laughs> what's my guess. <laughs> guess you heard what? What's my line? Yeah. Well, what's my guess? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that when they did the brake job, they did not replace the discs. They just put new pads in. They did not replace the dips. D-I- no, we're the no, dips. The dips you just call <laughs> <laughs> the discs. The disc rotors. The disc how much, rotors. How much? How did they charge you for this brake job? Fifty About bucks. Ooh. Oh well, if they didn't replace the discs, they cheated you. Uh-huh. They they must have replaced the discs. Hmm. They put in a faulty disc. Either that, or they failed to clean the discs properly. And somehow or another, some of the packing material that when, when the discs are shipped, they they cover them with this grease to prevent them from rusting. Uh-huh. Should they fall upon hard times, <laughs> or be stored in some place that's inappropriate for disc storage, like usually Boston Harbor, <laughs> and. and uh, and in the event that they don't clean this off correctly, what will happen is that, that oil and grease that they pack the discs in will get embedded in the pads and can often cause a grabbing when you step on the brake. And then once the thing heats up, I guess that oil or the grease gets driven further into the lining and the noise goes away. Either that or you've not, you know, the fixation with it has gone away and you've turned the radio on and forgotten about it. Uh-huh. But I bet you not only do you hear it, but you actually can feel something too. A grabbing. Well, so not yes. exactly. We're running out of time. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear it. <laughs> I wish somebody were grabbing. <laughs> oh, oh, that bad, huh? <laughs> let, me, let me. Maybe you'd let like to be interested in the off. click and clock endorsement for a personal <laughs> column. Here's what you. Here's what you do, Jeanette. Uh, get this thing back to them and ask them to do the brake job over again. Ask them to put a new set of pads on there. Leave the discs on there. Ask them to clean the discs off and just give you another set of pads, and let's see if the noise goes away. Okay. But I, I will tell you that I don't think it's dangerous. 
But while they're at it, they should take the opportunity to check to make sure everything's tight. There are two bolts that hold the caliper to the, the steering knuckle. Maybe it's just possible they left one of them loose. So before they do anything, they should check to see if those bolts are tight. And if they are, they should take the calipers off, put disc brake cleaner on the discs, clean them all off a second time, put new pads on, and they should send you home, and then they should probably move. Because <laughs> you'll be back in three days to complain again. But have them try that, and I think that'll fix it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks for Good your call. Good luck. Bye-bye. one <laughs> 888 talk or one 227 8255 Hello, you're on Car Talk. Uh, this is Fred from Ohio. Hi, Fred. Fred. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well also. Yeah, me too. What's up? Good. I've got a 1987 Alfa Romeo uh, Milano, which yes. I've stored for the past year. I haven't uh -huh. turned the engine over during that period of time. Yes. And I want my daughter-in-law, who recently moved to Ohio, to use it. Mm -hmm. I contacted a mechanic, and he said that I should disconnect uh, the uh, wire from the distributor to the plugs, and with a fully charged battery, turn over the engine uh, with a starter to bring up the oil pressure. Good idea. He says this will make sure that the oil is circulating. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I should... Um, reconnect the distributor and fire it up. Good advice. Now, um, my daughter-in-law's fiance, she returned uh, to um, uh, Ohio uh, to get married, mm -hmm. is an engineer, and he specializes in oils and additives. He says, just fire the engine up. The oil cir will circulate anyway. Now, uh, now this, this, this fellow right? has a degree in engineering? He has a degree in engineering. Is, is this your son now we're talking about? No, son-in-law. Future son-in-law. Future, uh, your daughter and son-in-law. That's oh, right. Okay, future son-in-law. And, and he specializes in lubricants. Lubricants. With, from what what school does he have this degree? Well, I haven't gone into that, but you, oh. the marriage has not yet taken place. Yeah, and, and we don't, we I, don't, we're not sure we want it to. Is I that it? I don't want to alienate him. <laughs> at least, at least until oh. it's taken place. Well, oh, that's I all see. right, Fred. We can do it. We can be responsible for all the alienation. We specialize in alienation, <laughs> so you don't okay. have to be wait, wait, responsible now, at all. We have to be careful though, because Fred is. You can we can tell by reading between the lines is dying to get rid of his daughter. <laughs> And if, the, if this engineer guy doesn't marry her, then her chance is probably a slim. Yeah, let my silence speak for itself. On that <laughs> anyway, my, my uh, future son-in-law and yeah. I yeah. Uh, decided uh, to try and contact you and uh, submit the question to you. And we will abide uh, by your decision. Yes. Uh, now we have to be now really, this, that seems a rather refined and gentlemanly way to do it. I mean, I think there should be some argument should ensue afterward. No, no, no. Well, I mean, they're relying mind, I mean, on they, us. Keep in mind, I'm going to say that they're engaged. They're still not married. What will happen after the marriage? <laughs> oh, okay, <is> right. <laughs> so it will be amicable at this point. Okay, it exactly. is incumbent upon us, however, exactly to use some degree of tact, yes. which is not, I would say, one of our fortes. Well, how long has the car been sitting? A year. It's been sitting for a year. Well, now, this did, did this you... is a vexing little problem. It is from a from a from an interpersonal yes, of uh, course. I mean, the, perspective. The, you right, mean? The, yes. I mean, the sheer mechanics of it are relatively it's simple. Trivial. It's trivial. Now, well, let's let's get rid of the 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 technical issue for a minute. Did you have the presence of mind to call a mechanic before you left this car sitting idle for a year? Did you take any precautions? In other words. Uh, except for disconnecting the battery Nothing else. and pushing it uh, backwards and forwards um, every month or so in order to move it off uh, the same point it's sitting on the yeah. on the tires. Other than that, it's... nothing else. Okay. Ohio. Yeah, left, uh, the, the gas tank is uh, all but full, and the uh, oil was changed, I think, uh, within a matter of a week or so before we yeah. put the car in storage. But a year is no time for a car to sit. It should, it should fire right up. I mean, the, the obvious issue is, did the oil drain down in that year that it sat enough for it to make a difference? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and the truth is that w where is the cutoff point? If, if a car sits for a day, we are led to believe that there's still a significant film of oil on all those things like the cylinder walls and, and, and well, actually just the cylinder walls and the cam lobes and whatever. Yeah. So that those first few seconds that the engine runs, there was not damage done. Yeah. And uh -huh. if you had gone out of town for three or four days and left the car at the airport, you wouldn't make any, you'd do anything special when you came back. You'd just turn the key. In right. fact, if you had gone away for a week and a half, you might not right. do so anything. So where is the threshold point? Very good. Very good. Yeah. Right. So your position is turn the key. Right. Well, 
because whatever was going to happen in a year happened after the first two weeks. And you, if, if you wouldn't have made any special precautions, taken any special precautions after two weeks, why take any now? Right, that's the position of the FSTB, the future <laughs> yeah. son-in-law to be. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly the logic of uh, my yeah. future son-in-law. Yeah. On yeah. the other hand, <laughs> one might argue that that may be true, but that whatever is happening is happening more and more and more and more and more every day. And whatever little amount of oil would have been on those cylinder walls after two weeks or three or four or five, there is absolutely no oil left That's my after logic. a year. Right, and if you apply the philosophy of... Rene Descartes, it can't hoit him. In other words, it can't possibly hurt to do what your mechanic suggested. No. And in fact, it could only help. So what's the reason for not doing it? Right. Your mechanic is suggesting that, see, when you crank the engine as opposed to letting it start, yeah. The engine is turning over much, much more slowly in the uh -huh. matter of a hundred or so RPM as opposed to thousands of RPM. Yeah, it's a tw 20 to 1 ratio at least. Yeah. yeah. So what he's suggesting is why not give the oil pump a chance to get some oil where it has to be when, when only a few hundred revolutions have occurred rather than having many thousands of revolutions occur. Because once you start it, I mean, if it's uh, if it's running at 2,000 RPM, that's revolutions per minute. It runs a minute, bing, 2,000 revolutions are gone. Yeah. Whereas at 100 RPM, when you crank it for a few seconds, it's only a few, literally, count them on one hand, number of revolutions during which we've gotten oil to pump up into the uh, against the cylinders. That's truly so, a Solomon's answer. Yeah, yes, so I mean, it can't hoit. I, I, I agree with my brother. I do brother. appreciate it. Yeah. Nice to talk to you, Fred. Okay, I've got one quick um, um, uh, wrap-up question. Yeah. Would you advise any particular checkups uh, once we get the car fired up? Well, for me and your age, a prostate check would be a good, <laughs> good thing to do once a year. Other than that, I would it just drive it. The, it comes through that clearly. In the <laughs> I would have someone take a look at the brakes. Okay. Uh, and I presume that this is an automatic Milano. No, it isn't. It's a stick shift. This is, a, this is the Mint Milano version. Mint, <laughs> Mint Milano. That's why it's been in storage for a year. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And as long as it runs, I mean, I I wouldn't worry about it. But after you get it fired up and, you, and you're confident that you can go around the block with it, then I would get it into someone to have it gone through before Thank you hand you it over. Thank you very much. See you, Fred. Thanks for calling, Thanks. Fred. Bye-bye. Well, it's happened again. You've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug, the subway fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Berman. Oh, we've mm. had to drop some of his nicknames this year due to budget cutbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Our associate producers are David, the calves of Belleville Green, and Catherine Frau Blucher, Fenelosa. Our web lackey is Doug, the old gray mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor, just back from the Pensacola, Capricola, Gorgonzola, and Pensacola <laughs> Festival, <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Margin Overa, our customer care, Louis Cheetah Howe, and WBUR in Boston. And even though the RCA dog puts his paws over his ears and howls whenever he hears <laughs> us say it, this is NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from WISE, the smart way to move money around the world. With the WISE account, you'll always get the real exchange rate.